Would you like to improve the audio quality of your YouTube videos and or Twitch streams? Of course you would. Let me show you how. What's up guys, Seattle Gamer here, and today I'm going to show you how to use Voice Meter Banana to split your audio sources up into different channels. This will allow you to have both better control over your audio while streaming, as well as edit your audio channel separately for your YouTube videos. First, I'm going to go over how to download and set up Voice Meter Banana. After that, I'm going to go over how to use OBS Studio to accept those new audio channels for both your streams and YouTube videos. Timestamps for both steps are on the screen now in case you want to hop around and skip around to whatever one you want. Let's set up Voice Meter Banana. First, we have to download both Voice Meter Banana as well as the virtual audio cables. Head over to vbaudio.com, a link will be in the description of this video. Click on the audio apps button, then click on this download button that pops up here in order to download a virtual audio cable. If you need more than one virtual audio cable, you can get either two more or four more by donating to this website. Next, we want to click on the little tab that says banana here at the top, then scroll down and click this install button to download the voice meter banana exe file. Once those are downloaded, you'll want to extract them and install both the virtual audio cable and voice meter banana onto your PC. Let's look at the different sections of this program. On the left side, you will see three hardware inputs. This is where you'll be connecting your microphone and virtual audio cables. You could also use it for other devices such as musical instruments, mixing boards, and audio interfaces. To the right of that, you'll find your virtual inputs. This is where you'll be inputting the sounds from the games you're playing and mixing it with your hardware inputs. On the top right are the hardware outputs. This is where you will tell the sound to go. That could be your headphones, speakers, a separate streaming PC, or a recording device. And finally, on the bottom right is the master section. It is split into three physical channels and two virtual channels. You can use this section to control all of the audio channels for each of your outputs. The first thing you want to do is go to this menu and enable both Auto Restart Audio Engine as well as System Tray Run at Startup. This will allow Voice Meter Banana to run every time that you restart your computer. Otherwise, you'll have to run the program manually every time you want to hear sound after restarting your PC. Next, let's set up our microphone into Hardware Input 1. I suggest you name each channel for future reference by right-clicking and inputting the name. Then click on Select Input Device. You'll notice that each device comes up under WDM or MME. These are different audio drivers. I suggest starting with WDM, and if that doesn't work, then switch it to MME. Which one is better may depend on your specific audio setup, so experiment with both. Under that, we have a few effects. The first one allows you to add a little bit of EQ and echo. By moving the square to the left or right, you can add more bass or high frequencies. By moving it up and down, you can add a bit of echo. If you right click, you can add some modulation. And if you right click again, you can control whether the input comes out of the right speaker, left speaker, or both. Under that, we have a single dial compressor and noise gate. A compressor reduces the dynamic range of your audio. In other words, it makes the louder sounds quieter and the quieter sounds louder in order to make the audio a more consistent volume. This is very useful for streaming and recording video, but I don't find the one in voice meter to work very well, so I suggest not using it for now. A noise gate controls when your audio source turns on and noises below a threshold do not go through. Any noise louder than the threshold does. This is useful for getting rid of some background noise like fan noise or keyboard clicks, and you can play around with it if you want to, but be careful. If you set it too high, you might clip away some of the audio you want to record. You want this set just high enough to get rid of the background noise, but still lower than your quietest whisper. Finally, if you click on this little bar here and you drag it down, you'll see that there is a limiter. A limiter acts kind of like a compressor. Basically, any noise that goes above whatever you have it set to, in this case, negative one decibels, will have the volume turned down to whatever that threshold is. 
This will help you not clip your audio. And really, I suggest you, you turn this on and set it to negative one. Finally, we have the fader gain slider. This will control the volume of hardware input one, in this case, my microphone. There's also a mute button, which will mute the channel, and a solo button, which will mute all of the other channels. We'll just leave this as is for now. Now we're gonna set up hardware input two to be our virtual audio cable. It is listed as VB Audio Virtual Cable. Let's see, this one right here. I'm gonna name this Discord because that is what I plan to use it for. That's all we wanna do for now. If you had a second virtual audio cable, you could put it into hardware input three and perhaps use it to modulate Spotify or iTunes or whatever other program you want to split the audio out from. Keep in mind that all of the rest of your audio, including your game and system audio, will be going through voice meter VIO channel in the virtual input section. Next, we wanna set up our hardware outputs. Again, this could be your headphones or speakers, whatever you want to listen to this audio from. I'm going to click on A1 and set it to my headphones. Now you'll notice that each one of these channels have A1 selected in green. This means they will all send data to output A1, which are my headphones. If you wanted to set up A2 to be, let's say, some speakers, then you could send each channel or whichever channel you wanted to those speakers by turning on a two. Voice meter banana is pretty much set up now, although now we need to send the audio from Discord into the virtual audio cable. To do that, we'll go into the program that we want to put into the virtual audio cable, then go to the settings. And what you want is the output device to be whatever that output cable you picked is. In this case, cable input VB audio virtual cable. Make sure that this matches this and you should be good to go. Another way to do it is to go into your sound settings. Then click app volume and device preferences. And then from here, you can use Discord and you can output it to that cable output as well. Keep in mind, if you want to do this, whatever program you want has to be running or else it won't show up in this list. All right, one last final step. Go back here to your sound settings and we want to put the output sound to this voice meter uh, VIO. And what this will do is it'll now send everything else, your game audio, your system audio, everything to this VIO here. A quick note, because we put our headphones to A1, this fader gain slider here will do all of the uh, volume going to A1 all at once. You can also mute, so that would mute your headphones in my case. This is set up currently so that you can hear your microphone in your headphones. Some people like that, some people don't. If you don't like it, you can click it off there and it will no longer send, or you can mute it and then it won't send it there. All right, now that voice meter banana is all set up, we have to set up our new audio sources in our recording or streaming software. I'm gonna be using normal OBS Studio. However, you can use this with Streamlabs OBS, Stream Elements, they're all basically exactly the same. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go up here to file, then we're gonna to go to settings, and we're gonna go down here to audio. I like to set my sample rate to 48 kilohertz, just get a little bit better audio. However, if your internet can't handle that or whatever, you can leave it at 44.1 and that'll be fine. You'll notice that here are all the different audio devices. Now there's a few different ways we can do this, but my favorite one is to actually disable all of them. All right, now they are all disabled. There's a reason for that. We'll get into that here in a second. Leave everything else here the same. Next, we want to go to output and you want to make sure your output mode is set to advanced because otherwise you can't pick more than one audio track. So under streaming, if you're streaming, we're going to want, let's see, our game audio, our microphone audio and discord. So we're going to want at least three. So I'm going to pick three from there. I'm not going to touch any of the video settings because that's a topic for another video. So let's I'm just going to assume you have that part handled. We're going to go to recording. We're going to do the same thing. We want three audio uh, tracks for this one. Now you can use either MKV or MP4. 
both of those will allow you to record multiple audio sources. Now there's good and bad things about both. Most people use MP4. However, if you use MKV, then if your stream dies or if your computer crashes or OBS crashes or something happens, you won't lose your video. The reason why is because MP4 has to finish encoding once you hit stop recording or stop streaming. And if something crashes before you hit that stop button, you lose everything. So if you had a really cool, like, I don't know, sniper clip or something you want to save and it crashes, it is gone. However, with MKV, you can still get that video back. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So pick either one, whichever one you want. MKV has a few extra steps as well, um, but that's the one I'm gonna pick from here. Audio, just leave that the same for here. Now up here, if you picked MKV, there is, where is that? All right, I, I lied, it's not in general, it's in advanced. If you picked MKV, there's this little button here that says automatically remux to MP4. That means when you hit stop streaming, it'll make that MKV file into an MP4. So I suggest that you click that. All right, we're gonna hit apply and we're gonna get out of here. If you didn't click that, all you have to do is go up to file, remux recordings, pick the recording that's the MKV and then hit Remux and it'll make it into an MP4. So now you'll notice we don't have any audio sources because I got rid of all of them. We are gonna add them here. So in whatever scene you're in, go to your sources. We're gonna add a new one, Audio Input Capture. And we're gonna create a new one. I'm gonna call it Microphone or you can call it, I don't know, Blue Yeti or whatever, whatever you want. Click OK. And then under Device, we are going to pick whatever your microphone is and set that one up. Now you'll see that that microphone is working there. I'm gonna just turn it down a little bit there so it's not peaking. Perfect. We're gonna do this again, another audio input capture. We're gonna call this one Discord uh, or Discord audio, whichever one you want. And you're gonna set it to this uh, virtual audio cable, VB audio virtual cable, because that's what we use for hardware input to in, in voice meter banana. Now we have a separate audio source just for Discord itself. We're gonna do one more audio input capture. This one we're gonna call uh, game audio, whatever you wanna call it. This one is gonna be set to that, where is it? Voice meter output VB audio voice meter of VIO. There we go. Now we have, there should be a third one down here. Oh. Now we have all three channels set up. If you had a fourth channel set up, maybe for Spotify or music program or, or Chrome or whatever you wanted, you would just add another one and you would just have four there. Now we're almost done setting this up. The last thing we're gonna do is click one of these cogs and go to advanced audio property. This here will tell us which one of these we wanna to go to which track. So what you wanna do is send Let's see. I usually like to have my microphone in track one. So I'm gonna uncheck all of them. Here we go. Microphone, we'll go to track one. Maybe Discord, we'll go to track two. And then the game audio, will go to track three. So during our stream, that won't really matter too much. It'll mix all of those together for the viewer. However, if you're recording and you don't do this step, then you'll have three audio channels with all of them in it. And so you want to be able to split those out. And that's it, simple enough. If you found this video useful, please, please do leave a like and comment down below and hit that little subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this one. I'm also streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash theottergamer on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday nights at 8.30 p.m. That's Mountain Time because I live here in Colorado if you want to check that out as well. If you have any questions about any of these steps or you couldn't get something to work, please leave a comment down below and I will try and help you out there. Or you can check in the description of this video, go to my Discord channel and I can help you out there as well. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. I thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode. Shit. I broke his armor full. Oh, Alright, let's go get him. Right. Top or bottom? Enemy UAV over Dude, top.
Dang it, revolver. I'm taking fire! Oh, Team white. Oh, damn it. Alright, we almost got enough money to buy Jake back. Do we want to? I mean, like... <laughs> oh, oh, you're still in your gulag. Oh.